Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at building a transition for Final Cut, or it could just be an effect that you use inside Motion. And it's going to look something like this. So let's get started on it. So as I say, this is going to be a transition. So uh, let's set that up initially. We need to select, instead of the normal motion project, we need to select Final Cut Transition. Uh, I've gone for 192010 ET, uh, and my frame rate is 24, and I'm choosing a duration of three seconds. So let's open this project. So what we need to do is create a complete overlap between the two transition layers. So I'm going to come to the end with Transition A selected, that layer there, and hit O on the keyboard. Come to the Start, select Transition B, and hit I on the keyboard. Now, we don't really want to be working with these default layers as we build this project because it's a little bit confusing. So I'm actually going to turn them both off. And I'm just going to create uh, some text. So there's my text. And I'm also just going to create a circle just for fun so we can stick that next to it, like so. And just give it a, a nice orange color or something like that. Maybe let's make the text colored as well. I just it, It's kind of interesting to see what happens with the colors uh, when you do this. So I'm going to create some purple text. Really just mm, this is only for the purposes of demonstration. So what I'm going to do is inside this group, I'm going to make a new group. So object new group. And I'm going to select my transition A and those test objects that I've made and drag them into it. And I'm going to make this group fixed resolution. Then at the top, I'm going to make another new group, and I'm going to call this Displace. And into this group, I'm going to come to the generators, and I'm going to look for the generator called Cellular, and I'm going to add that. I'm also going to add the Blur, Directional Blur. Come to the Inspector, and let's set that amount to 64. This is going to give us a much more, much nicer look, I think. And really important that we turn on crop, otherwise uh, it's going to create some problems for us. So turn on crop. And now we can turn this group off because we don't need to see it. So remember we made a group inside the master group, which has got our transition A layer and these two other items for test items. And that was fixed resolution. So to that group, we're going to add distortion bump map. And we're going to take that cellular layer and add it to the image map like that. And then I'm just going to set that direction to be 90. And then I'm going to increase the amount. And you'll see as I do so, it starts to create this the, the feeling of this disintegration effect. I'm actually going to increase the cellular size, I think, here. Just uh, maybe go for 20. Going to explain a little bit more about that later on, but I, I think 20 is going to be good. So another thing I want to do is I want to keyframe the bump amount. So if we come to the start, we set a keyframe for the amount. We set that amount down to zero. We come forward to two seconds and we set that amount to 10. And you see that progressively increases the displacement. What I'm also going to do quickly is to right click on that and show in keyframe editor. And you'll see down here, we've got the keyframes for that. I'm just going to select that first one by dragging around it and to select that and right click ease out. So what that will do is it, it will gradually ease into the effect and that'll be more effective. Now it's not disintegrating my elements off the screen. And that's because we need to animate the gradient of the cellular. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that white tab there. We're going to come to the first frame here and we are going to keyframe its location. So click on the location keyframe button. And again, we're going to step forward to two frames and we're going to set that location to one. And now what happens is we get that and it all disappears and we turn on our transition A layer, you can see how that works. And we can turn on B and you'll see that it transitions to our B layer. 
Now, I said we could make do with a project duration of three seconds, but actually we've, we've used two seconds instead. So let's just change that command J to come to the project properties and let's set that duration to two seconds. Just tidy everything up. And now what we need to do is we need to set up a rig that will allow us to change the direction. So supposing, supposing we don't actually want it to come off to the left, we want it to come off to the right or up or down. We want to be able to control that inside Final Cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to create object new rig. And we're going to select pop up. And let's double click on the word pop up there. And let's rename that direction. Now we've only got three snapshots there and we need an extra one. So I'm going to click on the plus button there and that creates a new snapshot. We've now got four of them. So I'm going to select snapshot one and I'm going to rename that left. Select slap, new snapshot, the next one down, rename that as right. Next one down, rename that as up. Next one down, rename that as down. So now we've got proper labels for what we wanted to be able to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the direction of the bump map. So select that and drag it over that rig there, or that pop-up rather, like so. And similarly with the directional blur angle, add that by dragging it over there. And now you'll see we've got those two elements in our uh, pop-up rig. So the left is correctly set up as it is. So now let's select the right from our pop-up menu here. And we need to leave that directional blur as it is, that's fine. But we need to change the angle of the bump map to 270. And now it disappears off to the right. So let's now select the up direction. This time we do want to change the cellular directional blur, and we're going to change that to 90. We're going to set the bump map direction to be 180. That goes off to the top like that. And finally, let's select down. The bump map direction is going to be zero. Oh, also needed to change the cellular direction. Sorry, the um, cellular blur direction. There you go. So that's going down like that. And then obviously we will need to publish that direction. So we'll right click on it, publish. If we come over to project there, click on the project tab, you'll see that menu has been published. I'm going to set the default to left, I think. So now we need to save it. So file, save. Let's select a directory and let's call it disintegrate and publish it. And one other thing I think we could do actually is to come to the cellular and publish the size. And also we could publish that directional blur amount. And come over here and we could just rename that blur just to give us a bit more control over this effect inside Final Cut. And so here we are inside Final Cut. I've uh, typed the word disintegrate, given it a font that I like, and then I'm going to come over to my transitions folder and grab the transition we've made, and let's see how that works. So there we go. It's disintegrating off to the left. So if we select that transition, you can see we've got our menu here. We can send it off to the right instead. Of course, if we want our transition to be shorter or longer, we can just drag the handle and it will be slower. So we can affect the speed of it just by using the controls inside Final Cut here. You make it really short. Whatever we want to do that. Now, what I've done here is I've set it up to be a transition into another image and let's look what happens. So obviously we haven't set any, any kind of animation up for transition B and anything that's visible through layer A is immediately going to be visible. So we could fix that by coming back to the motion project. And for example, we could just add a fade up on the B layer to smooth that out. So come to the first frame, set an opacity keyframe of zero and Last frame, set it up to 100, save that. And now when we come back to Final Cut, that transition works more smoothly. Obviously you can create any sort of transition for, for B 
it's really up to up to you what you want to do but um, that that might be the simplest way of doing it ideally really you just want to put this on a a separate layer rather than doing a rather than using it as a transition between two clips but that might be the way to go so there's just one final thing i want to discuss and that's that we can make this a lot more interesting if we layer up a couple of extra versions of the bump map and a couple of extra instances of the cellular. So let's just do that. Let's duplicate that bump map and let's duplicate the cellular. That's command D. So to that, I'm going to use the cellular copy for the bump map copy. So copy to copy like so. And let's turn our original elements back on just so we can get a feel for this. What we can do is we can have a different scale for the cellular here. So we can set that to 40 and we can have a different, slightly different direction for the bump map. I'll need to remove that from the widget for the time being to be able to control it. So we go for 95. And what this will do is it will give us a more organic looking effect. So I'm going to do that again. So duplicate that bump map, again, duplicate the cellular. So that third bump map, I'm going to use cellular copy one and Instead of 85, 95, I'm going to go for 85. And again, let's just adjust the cellular amount. Let's go for 60. And now the overall effect is more interesting because we're not just going along a straight line. We're getting sort of multiple displacement and this is starting to look really nice. Obviously, it makes it a lot more complicated in terms of your setup here. You're going to have to go through and make adjustments for all those elements. But it might be well, well worth doing, and I, th I think it's just a much nicer effect. But I don't want to overcomplicate this tutorial by, by going through all of the rigging for that. It's something you can work out, I hope. But if you don't want to do all of that and you just want a free effect, then by all means download the pre-built version of this that I will put a link to in the comments. And don't forget that if you wanted to create a materialize effect, you could simply reverse the processes being used here. And that would be very effective as well. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching.